Okay, you guys see this board? This is three quarter inch, and it's called uh, blonde wood. I'm not sure you could see the markings on the side of it. Yeah, you might can get it right there. Now, I'm getting ready to put kills on it, but I wanted to show it to you guys before I put the kills on. And I'm just going to put one coat, and I'm going to get around the edges as well, because I want to seal that up. And this is Kills 3. It's got a sealer, stain blocker, primer, all that stuff in it. But the better you can seal these edges, the better off you're going to be. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, good morning. This is Kathy Crowder's Mountain, North Carolina. And we're going to make a Valentine barn quilt today. It's called Swoony Heart. And a lady found it someplace and sent me the pattern and I drew it out. And made her one and now she wants one for her friend. So this particular barn quilt is going to be flying from Crowder's Mountain, Kings Mountain, North Carolina. To California. Hopefully by Monday. Because I wanted to get to her in time for her birthday. That's what our goal is anyway. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what happens. If I quit knocking the camera around, we'll see what happens. Okay. Let me get my stuff together. Give that time to dry. And I'll be back. And we'll draw a swoony heart. Stay tuned, y'all. Okay, good morning again. <laughs> I can't remember if I told you my name or not, but it's Kathy. And I'm in, over here on Crowder's Mountain, North Carolina. It's, it's actually near King's Pinnacle and King's Mountain, but it's Crowder's Mountain Range. So here you go. <laughs> We're going to make a swoony heart. And I wanted to show you the pattern first. And... I think that I colored it in dark enough for you to see it. And you can take a snapshot of it so you can have the pattern as well. And you can make your own mind up about what colors you want. You could do the pink and the red or, you know, there's a hundred different shades of red and a hundred different shades of pink. But let me show you what we're going to do. And... Well, before I get started, this is this is an eight block quilt. It's eight across and eight up. I've got the border separated. I could do a double border, but I probably won't do that for this one. I'm just going to do a single two inch border. So each one of my blocks in here are going to be two inches wide. So I'll show you how I mark this off and draw the grid. And this is a 24 inch piece of wood, so our quilt is going to be two by two. Alright, so for the red, we're going to use Showstopper. But any bright red, I think, would look pretty. And then the client has chosen Cherry Fizz. Can you see that? For her pink. And then we're just going to put ultra white in the background to make that red and pink pop and for the border we're going to put the showstopper I keep holding it up there too far okay now I'm going to start drawing off the grid so the first thing that I want to do and I'm going to try to zoom in when I get a couple of the marks drawn after I get my pen out here Try to use the blue to mark off the grid. One thing about uh, measuring this off, and remember your ruler starts at the zero mark, not at the end of the piece of plastic, or the actual ruler, it's at the zero mark, and it ends at the end of the next number, wherever it, that, that is. 
So I'm not starting on the end, I'm starting at the zero, and I'm just going to mark off two inches on each side. Let me move this out of the way. To me, it's just easier to draw the border first if you're going to put one on there, and that way you know what the what you're working with in the center of your barn quilt. Y'all, I have to tell you something. The first one of uh, Swoony Heart that I drew, I actually filmed it and I was going to put it on YouTube. And you know I'm not a, I'm not a film person, not a videographer. I just it just was horrible, and I deleted the whole thing. And I kept debating on whether I was going to actually paint another one. But then a client called and said she wanted another one, just like that I did for her, and for me to mail it to California. So that's what I'm going to do, and I thought, okay, that's my sign. I need to put that on Facebook, not Facebook, YouTube. I don't, I don't, I don't put, well, I do too. I share it. I share it to Facebook. First, I don't put anything on there, but I do. Okay, here's what I'm doing now. I made my little tick marks at two inches. And I'm just connecting the little tick marks now, and I'll have my two inch border of my quilt. Need to take some Brillo pad and clean my ruler up, don't I? Got big old blue gobs right there. Okay, you see? Now let me see if I can zoom in on that, because I don't know that you could see it. Sorry. Okay, you see that? I measured two inches here and all the way around, and then I just connected it. I'm not so sure. You see that? And I just connected it, so that's all you have to do, and you'll have your border. Sorry. You know what the worst part of it is? Is I, I'm not so sure I know how to edit it to get that part out. But I'll try. Okay. Now... You see, we got our two inch border and we need eight blocks. So our blocks, we're going to, okay, let me start all over. We had 24 inches and we just took up four of them. So we've got 20 inches left. That's right. Okay, then eight in the 20, you're going to have two and a half. So each one of these blocks are going to be two and a half. And if you'll see the grid, how I drew it, you can tell each one of these on this graph paper, each one of these blocks are one inch. So that's the half. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to measure, we're going to make a tick mark. Every one and a, every two and a half inches, vertically, vertically, and <laughs> horizontally, okay, and we'll have our grid. All right, it's going to be two and a half.
zoom in on that a little bit more. All right. So you see I've got I've got my ruler at the zero not at the start but at the zero and it's a perfect ending over here on 20 so I know I've got it right so then I'm going to make a tick mark at every two and a half See that? And on some of my wooden rulers, if I teach in a class, okay, I finished drawing my grid. I went over two and a half inches. I drew it all the way across, up, back across, and back down again. So then I just connected it. So that's the that's the grid you see these these lines right here that's the grid right there and now the only thing you have to do is just follow your blocks follow your patterns like the first two blocks there's nothing in it the second block you're going to go up and back down on the next block and back up and down so take one row one block at a time and just Follow your pattern. Do whatever this pattern has got on it in that block. That's what you do. Does that make any sense? There's got to be a better way to explain that. But let me show you. All right. So this block. Can you see it? This, these two blocks didn't have anything. This block. Always try to get right in your corners. Right, they moved them. See that? And I like these heat erasable pens. Make that a little bit darker so you can see it. I like these heat erasable pens because I can I can hit it with the heat and that line goes away. Now we're on the second row. There's nothing in that one, nothing in that one. But you see that one is split in half. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to put our line exactly in the same direction. Got kills all over me. Alright, then the next two doesn't have anything. And this one is split in half again. Alright, you got the hang of it now. So for for the heart is the same way. I'm gonna do this one and this one. And I'll show you. We're on the third row. One, two, three. And we're gonna get it up here. It will. <laughs> I got this homemade lazy lazy Susan under it. It wants to wiggle. And then this one is in the same direction. And if you'll notice, did I kick you? If you'll notice here, this one is just like up and down, up and down. And if you turn it around that way, it's the same thing. And all the way around, so you could actually you could actually go around it and make those blocks and then fill it in, but it, and if you've done them before, that's what I'd do. But, if you hadn't, take one block at a time, one row at a time. 
and you'll be surprised in just a minute you're going to have this pattern grown. So that's blank. This one has a line. That one has a line. And once you get used to drawing them, you could have went all the way up here with your ruler. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to be confusing to anybody. Of course, you folks have already made barn quilts and you just wanted this pattern, you've probably already turned it off. <laughs> All right. See, we got that third row. We got the bottom of the heart right here. And now we're going to come back along. And we're going to do the same thing. We're on the fourth row now. We're right here. So I'm going to finish drawing it off. And then you'll see when I get finished that I've got that pattern on there. I'm doing just like I did with the first three rows. Let me see if I can zoom in so you can see. You see the lines that I've got on there? Okay. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, let me see if I can move you over here and you can see my lines. See the lines that I've drawn on my grid? Now right here, right in here, part of that grid is the pattern. You see that? And I, I don't necessarily mark that again when I'm painting them, but, but for the sake of this video, I went ahead and just went over top of it in my red so that you could see it. So here's the, here's the arrow. See that, this part of the, well, you can't see that. All right. See this, see that bottom part? There you go. See this part here? That is this, right here. So you're just going to take one block at a time, one row at a time, and I got it all drawn off. And now, if you can see that. I hope those lines show up. So you can see what it looks like before you start painting it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape up all my dark red places. And you know I've shown you guys how I cut the tape. Other people do it different ways. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and this and in that in that instance you really don't have to worry about cutting it right on the line now I'm going to take a card and I'm going to burnish that and you can take any old grocery store card credit card whatever and, and just press it down and now I just cut it with that little thing or you could use a eye scraper not eye scraper uh, I guess you could use an eye scraper but a glass scraper but here you see how I have got to take this section and I've got to tape that too 
So I'm taking my razor and laying it right on the line and I've got a real crisp clean corner. And again, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to follow that line. And then I'm going to lay my razor just like that and pull it. And I got a really crisp corner. Hadn't wasted. See, I keep kicking y'all. Sorry. It's rude. All right. And sometimes I, I wait till I get through taping up a place before I burnish it. But um, you can do it as you go if you wanted to. You know, I always say, it's your art, your way, and I would encourage you guys to not just watch this channel, but there's other channels out there that tells you how they do it, and you could always pick up a, some kind of new trick from them, and then tell me, but I've learned a lot by watching YouTube channels. And, and from other people, you know, I go to teach the class, but I, I learn things from those folks. Some of those folks that I teach are quilters, cloth quilters, and they'll tell me different things that they do to make their uh, work easier. And I'm thinking, maybe I could figure that out for wood, too, and sometime I have. So, anyway, here's the block, and I'm going to continue taping up. And I'll show you again in a minute. Okay, you see that? I've got it all taped up. And like I was telling you about using the razor, you see how these, these blocks are going to touch that block. So I needed to make sure that was a sharp, clear corner right there. Because that's the difference in some barn quilts. You want to make sure your your triangles, your little edges all match up, your points. Because that's what gives it, it its a distinct look. If you've got your points and all messed up and they're not matching, it would be like if you tried to put a quilt together and didn't get it to match up. It'd be all wacky. So now you can see you can see the pattern better actually now. See the red the dark red that is what I have taped up. And now I'm going to take my heat gun. You know y'all seen this before. Here's a better looking one. That looks better. But I used my old, old faithful. And I'm just going to get rid of those lines. Of erasing all that out. These erasable pins just gets rid of it for you with the heat gun. And if this is the first video that you've watched, I get these from Amazon. Just type in uh, the search bar, heat erasable, no, 
the the ink pens the pens are heat erasable pens you can find them on Amazon but with this one it's a heat tool so just type in mini heat gun and it'll come up and you'll see there's all colors I've got pink and purple but there's red with black and um, white all different colors I think there's blue but anyway I'm gonna finish this up and I'll be back okay I'm hoping this lights good enough but anyway, let me show you what I was going to do. You know, we're going to use this showstopper. And it is so deep red. Now, if I didn't have gray or anything like that, if I didn't have a, a undercoat, I could just put four or five coats on here. And it'll be fine. But to, to save some uh, steps, I'm going to paint gray I'm get going all this is how I do it I'll go around my tape first that activates that sealer and then I fill it in but I'm going to do all the blocks that I've got taped off that's what I'm going to do so that my red will show up better and I don't have to put quite as many coats on it. So I'll be back in just a minute but before I forget it I always put three coats no matter what color it is I always put I put a, a coat I'll dry it I'll put another coat and dry that and put another coat and then if I don't like it, if I can see through it, I'll put another coat on it. As long as you put thin, thin coats, you're going to be fine. So, I'll get the rest of this painted and be back.
Okay, y'all. Painted the red. Pulled the tape off. I was so excited because none of my paint popped up. I don't know what I did different, but you know, you always have a little bit that's going to come up with the tape or just a little bit in the corner or something, but it stayed on there good this time. So, the phone rang, and so while I was talking on the phone, I just took the tape off and taped up the parts that are going to be pink. And we're remember, we're going to use this uh, Cherry Fizz. And I'm going to paint three coats on it. And I'm not going to put the gray underneath it because it's a lighter color. But that really worked well, putting that gray down. And I put three coats of red on top of that. And it's just really pretty. I would have had to put four or five coats of that uh, showstopper to get it to that same shade that I wanted. So putting that one coat of gray down really helped. And so now I'm going to, I've already taped it up, and I used my card and burnished it. And now, um, and I got, I used the heat wand, I got rid of my grid marks, and so now I'm going to paint it. And I'll be back when I get that painted, and I might, I might peel it, take the tape off when y'all are watching if I don't forget. I'll try, okay? <laughs> While I'm painting this, I thought that I would remind you guys, or not remind you, but ask if you... Um, if this was helpful in any way at all, any of the videos, if you would subscribe, uh, subscribe and hit like and ring the bell for notification, or hit like and subscribe and then the bell comes up. That's the way it goes. Anyway, if there's any other patterns that that you guys find that you want me to show you how to do, uh, just yell at me. I'll figure it out. Gets uh, some of the more complicated patterns are kind of hard to show people on the video how to do. And even in the classes, most of my classes are for beginners, but I've had so many people coming back, uh, they're really getting good at it. So I've got to figure out how to do some advanced classes. But, you know, an advanced class, Com complicated patterns, it's just going to be hard to have a lot of people. The last class I had was 17, and one before that, that was 16 people. And you can get beginner patterns and show people how to do them, but you think about Love's Blossom or something like that, it probably just needs to be a few people. It wouldn't be fair to them not to learn how if they come to a class. I might get brave one day, try to show you how to do that. Like I was saying, uh, I think I said it earlier, there's lots of folks out there that paint barn quilts. And there's Facebook groups. And I'm telling you, there's some really, really talented people out there. And you can learn so much from just, you know, just reading the, the text, the thread of the text. And people give you all kind of opinions on how to do this and how to do that. 
What you have to do is figure out what you want to do. What works for you. Your art, your way. That's my motto. No drama. Let me dry that and put two more coats on it and I'll be back. Okay, I've got the three coats on there. And I'm going to start peeling it off. And let's hope none of my paint peels. See how I got it close enough to the other color and I don't have any white streaks. You never know until you peel it off. And the world won't come to an end if I do. Because I can fix it. Y'all noticed I, I used uh, the other side of the tape. There's a couple little strips that I didn't use. I flipped it around. Got to make sure it gets good and dry. I'm holding my breath. I'll let my chair if I don't start breathing. Okay, all this is going to be that ultra white, ultra white, and the border is going to be red. So, I think you got the gist of it now, how to make this, but I have to tell you the best trick that I found in a long time was just using a card to press down on that tape and get it sealed good. But anyway, uh, this is exterior house paint semi-gloss, if, if y'all want to know. This is flat, but the red and the white are semi-gloss. And um, what else did I want to tell you? I'll think of it when I come back. I'm going to tape up all that white and paint it and then I'll be back. But you see the, you know, I got slap happy with the brush the way I always do. But that'll, I'll cover that up and I'll get rid of all these grid lines with my heat wand. And I'll be back in just a little while. Oh, my bones are creaking. Did y'all hear that pop? <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, I'm getting that taped up. 
just wanted to show you where I was. And I'll be back in a minute. Or five or ten. You guys see that tape? I was trying to show you. When you're taping it down and you're taping over a, another color. Uh, one thing that I found. I don't know if I can. See that just little tiny bit of red that I left? Can you see that? Just a little bit of red going through there. And that helps not to have any white showing. When you get finished, like here... See how my line, my, oh, uh, see if I can get it up there for you. See how my pink and red are together. There's no white streaks. I didn't miss any, I didn't miss it. I got them right up against each other. And that's the way you want. You don't want anything, a gap in your paint. You want your lines to be real defined. Okay, I got it all painted except for the border and I'm going to let that third coat of white dry a little bit and then I'm going to peel off that tape. And that's the first time I've used that tape so I'm going to stick it over here on a board and then my next barnacle I'll just use that when I can. I'm not going to waste it. And I'm going to tell you something that I see. I can't remember when it was. I read somebody posted on one of the Facebook groups that they actually used their tape more than one time. Now, I use, like you can see, I use this and then I'll make sure it's dry, but I'll flip it around and use the other side. But they were talking about using it over and over. I don't know. I, I might not be that brave. Unless I got desperate and I was about to run out of tape. Then I might try it. Alright, I'm going to let that... going to let it sit here for a minute. And then I'm going to pull it off and I'll paint the border. And I'll come back and let you see it. It'll be all finished up. Except for the touch-ups. I always have touch-ups.
Okay, we're on a roll now. I still have some little touch-ups to do where I got, I call it slap happy with the brush. You can see them right here. I don't know if you could see them on that camera or not, but I could see them. So I'll fix that. But I got to tape up the outside and paint that border and then we're going to be done. And I'll give you another shot at uh, taking a screenshot of that pattern too or you could take a screenshot of this one I mean it's really two inches wide and you got eight blocks and that's, that's all it is really and you could actually follow this picture instead of the pattern if you wanted to alright coming to an end I promise Okay, here she is. She's finished. I hope you like this. I'm not sure you got a good light, but it's early morning and it's foggy and rainy. So I thought maybe I could get a good shot of it without all these lights. Okay, here it is, and here is the paint that I used, and here is the pattern one more time, let's see if I can get it for you, there you go. There you go. See you guys next time. May do something for. Well, let's see. Be March. Might do a flower. We may do a, just a pretty star. If you got anything in particular you don't want me to try to put on here, just leave it in the comments. And if you like what you saw and you want more, just share, click like subscribe and all that good stuff but I really would appreciate it if you would share it it helped me grow my channel I'm actually up to 629 I think woohoo I'm proud of it I only had 47 friends on Facebook so I'm doing good <laughs> bye y'all